So Brexit is this multimedia franchise experience thing that's been playing on all the news channels for the last six years. And recently it's gone a bit mental. I can't even begin to tell you what the fuck's going on with it right now. People are saying such mad, confusing shit. Apparently, even though they were all saying that this Brexit deal was great two years ago, now they're saying that we have to change it because it's not a real Brexit or something. What's the good news on this Brexit you got us into? <laughs> but we've, been, we've been out and we're going to do worse than most other major economies. Partly because we have a Remainer's Brexit. It's a Remainer's Brexit. Okay, so Britain has exited the EU by remaining in it? What? Is David Davis actually a real person? Anyway, I think they're doing all these mad stunts on the show at the moment because ratings have been falling for years now. And like any desperate failing TV show, they seem to be trying every single plot twist they can think of just to keep people interested. Affairs, wild parties, blackmail. They even introduced a new love interest for Boris Johnson called Nadine Dorries who's a children's author, and she writes books about angels, and says things like this. We're responsible for making sure you have super fast broadband in your home. That means you can downstream your movies, downstream your movies, downstream your movies, downstream your movies. Anyway, you will have heard that they recently fired the main character, Boris Johnson, making him the third Prime Minister to have lost the role since Brexit happened. But apparently this has nothing to do with Brexit being a bad idea and impossible to do well. No, Brexit was perfect and beautiful and the will of the people and amazing Amazing, despite the fact it's turned into this nightmare monster that eats people's faces. I'm actually kind of looking forward to watching whoever's going to try and make it work next because it's going to do the exact same thing and the blood shower when it rips their heads off is pretty and like fireworks. Go on Rishi, try and tame the Brexit monster. Go on, I dare you. Anyway, so since this fluffy tit is the reason that everyone's been talking about the show again, it's probably best to go over a bit of history on how we got here. So, Boris Johnson. Basically, when the show started with the vote to leave the EU, they incorporated this comedy side character called Boris Johnson, played by Keith Lemon, who'd been showing up as a bit part on a ton of reality television shows for years beforehand. He won this celebrity game show thing in 2008 called News Night, which was a show where the funniest looking contestant gets to be Mayor of London for a bit. And when he became Mayor of London, he did all these wacky things, like hanging off of a zip wire physically assaulting a child, paying some people to build a bridge that doesn't exist. Basically, he was popular because he looked really stupid, but it was alright to give him a role like, say, Mayor of London, because that's a role that doesn't really mean anything. But then it went to their heads in 2019 when they did this weird plot twist where they made him Prime Minister of an actual country in the real world. Like, an actual serious country that has, like, an economy and people and there's like wars and disease and stuff. This guy is in charge of a country. He obviously wasn't going to last because his only ideas were just as bizarre as whatever that thing on his head is. Like this one where Boris appointed this man who's like a living parody of a British person being written by Americans called Jacob Rees-Mogg as Minister for Brexit Opportunities. You'd think everyone would have figured out what the benefits of Brexit were before doing it, but that would require any of these people to know what the fuck they were doing. So Johnson appointed Jacob Rees-Mogg to figure out what the benefits of Brexit are now that Britain's left the EU. You'd think that Jacob could have just rattled a few off the top of his head, given that he campaigned for Brexit at the start of the series. But no, instead he had to hold a poll in a newspaper asking members of the public to tell him why Brexit was going well, in order to justify an opinion that he already had. And from these suggestions, he compiled this list of things that Britain can do now that it's not in the EU. Including such exciting things as... Having a slightly more powerful vacuum cleaner. Reduce requirements for businesses to conduct fixed wire testing and portable application testing. Abolish the rules about the size of vans that require an operator license. Abolish EU limits on electrical power levels of electrically assisted pedal cycles. Simplify the calculation of holiday pay, for example 12.07% of pay, to make it easier for businesses to operate. Oh, and also Brexit's good because there are funny numbers on a road sign in a tunnel in Dartford. But there is... Um, a law that requires in tunnels, so if you go through the Dartford Tunnel, 
there have to be signs saying how you get out of it every 25 metres. But in this country we use yards for road signs, so the signs say 121 yards in one direction and 1152 yards in the other. We've got very funny numbers and this is all because of an EU regulation hitting UK law and coming up with an odd answer. How the hell has this country literally turned into the man yells at cloud headline from The Simpsons? So yeah, boring stories about vacuum cleaners and funny numbers was probably the main reason for the ratings dip. It turned out Brexit just wasn't as exciting as it was made out to be. Then they decided to retcon a fan favourite episode from 2019 called Oven Ready Brexit Deal. Basically, at the end of 2019, there was a storyline where Boris said that he had an oven-ready Brexit deal, that if you voted for him in the general election that year, that was it. Brexit was finished and done forever, and we could all just go back to our lives. But then, about halfway through 2021, they all started complaining about this thing called the Northern Ireland Protocol, which is apparently a bad thing, even though Northern Ireland's economy is doing really well at the moment compared to the rest of the UK, which isn't. So Boris's government decided to introduce some legislation to undo some bits of that oven-ready Brexit deal that was so amazing two years ago. Boris got Brexit done, even though he wanted to undo bits of it with legislation that would break international law. Thing is though, surprisingly, no one really gave a shit, and ratings were still falling. Which is what caused them to start on the current storyline called the Mad Shit Period. So, in case you haven't been watching for the last six months, the writers of Brexit have started throwing out all these mad storylines every week or so in a desperate bid to get people to pay attention to them again. And they've been so many and they've been so ludicrous that I'm just going to have to read a list of them with minimal commentary or we'd be here all day. One of Boris's allies broke lobbying rules, so Boris tried to change the rules so that he wouldn't have to resign. Boris said that he couldn't remember who paid for a massively expensive refurbishment of the Downing Street flat, where he somehow managed to spend £500 on a fucking tablecloth. He met with a former KGB agent who's been sanctioned for connections to a violent dictator without any officials present. When Kabul fell to the Taliban, his foreign secretary, Dominic Raab, was apparently lying on a beach somewhere, and when he was caught, he told everyone he couldn't have been on the beach because the sea was closed that day. While a deadly virus was ravaging the country, him and his mates had wild parties in Downing Street, in which they puked everywhere and broke things while people couldn't visit their dying relatives in hospitals. Then he lied and said he wasn't at these parties, and his supporters said that he was... As far as I can see, he was, in a sense, ambushed with a cake. <laughs> ambushed with a cake. <laughs> ambushed with a cake. <laughs> Cakes are everywhere. Every night I wake up screaming. Don't know about you, but I bet Vladimir Putin's shitting himself over this guy. There were just so many of these mental episodes thrown at you one after another that when the other week they did this storyline, I didn't think anything of it at the time. The Chris Pincher scandal. So Boris appointed a guy called Chris Pincher to a senior government role, and he turned out to be a sexual predator. No, really, the writers on this show call the sexual predator character Chris Pincher. J just imagine if this was real life and not some stupid TV show, right? Anyway, so Boris did that while well aware of the sexual harassment. And then he lied and claimed he didn't know anything about it. And when this came out the other week, I didn't stop and think, wait, he overlooked predatory behaviour before giving him the job. That's pretty fucking far. I just went... Yeah, that's pretty normal for Boris. But no, apparently this is the series finale and they're replacing Boris Johnson next season. So, what now? Dude, actually I can tell you what happens now this time. The Tory membership are going to pick the next Prime Minister because that's how a functioning democracy works apparently. That Prime Minister is going to continue pretending that none of this shit has had anything to do with the fact no one's had a clue how Brexit was ever supposed to work since this nightmare mess started. And all of this will play out on TV, on social media, and in all of our heads every second we're awake for the rest of our natural lives. Cheers to more of this never-ending bollocks.